Hey guys, this is Lee here. Have you ever been sailing and then had to land your boat and really didn't know how to approach the shore or the dock or the canal that you're going into? This can be especially hard when the wind is blowing from the water and onto the beach. That's called an onshore breeze because the wind is blowing on the beach or on the shore, or it's also called a lee shore. So in this video, I'm going to go over how to approach a lee shore and land your boat. So some of the principles that you could use with your sunfish or any other small boat will pertain to any boat, including big boats, medium-sized boats, and boats with motors. I'm gonna go over these principles and I'm also gonna show you real-time footage of landing a sailboat. But before we get to the video, I'd like to thank all the subscribers who are helping the channel grow. So if you haven't subscribed already, please press that button right down there and subscribe to the channel. I really appreciate it. And now to the video. So I'm gonna ask you three questions and watching the video through the end will let you answer these really important questions. The first question is, what is a lee shore? Is a lee shore a shore that the wind is coming off the shore and onto the water? Or B, is the wind coming off the water and hitting the shore? Or C, is it my own private island? The second question I have for you is when you're on port tack sailing downwind and the sail is onto, off the right side of your boat, do you enter a canal going downwind on the left side, the center, or the right side of the canal? And the third question is, when you're on starboard tack sailing downwind, which means your sail is off the left side of your boat, are you gonna sail downwind into a canal on the left side, the center, or the right side of a canal? Watch till the end of the video and you'll find out. I'm going to go over a few principles that everyone should know about landing your boat onto a lee shore. The first and probably most important principle is always having your sailboat face into the no-go zone and your sails are luffing before you hit the beach. Now when I first took lessons back when I was 27 years old, I was taught by my instructors that it was okay to just lift your dagger board on my sunfish and just slide into the beach. And for some reason, that always worked. I didn't care about damaging the bottom of the boat because that's what I was told. However, when I got my first boat and I sailed alone, I did the same thing, but then I actually broke my boat. So don't just sail into the beach downwind. It's not good. So to review, the first principle on ending any sailing journey is to have your sails luffing and the bow pointed into the no-go zone. When you're sailing, you should know where the wind is coming from. If the wind is going to be blowing you towards the shore, that's called a lee shore or an onshore breeze. And this brings us to the next principle, which is leave plenty of water between the boat and the shore. Now the reason to leave plenty of water between the boat and the shore are a few things. One is that you don't wanna hit the shore with the boat because you could damage the boat. And two, breeze is gonna to continue to push the boat towards the shore. So when you're holding the boat in the water while you're getting your dolly or someone helps you get your dolly, it's going to naturally go towards the shore. Now, if you live somewhere where there's waves and boat wakes and ferry wakes that I live, then you have to watch out because sometimes you get some big rollers coming in that could actually take the boat away from you or even make you lose your boat. So having plenty of water between the boat and the shore gives you some margin for error just in case the boat wants to get away from you. Also, by pl leaving plenty of water by the boat, you have to judge how deep the water is. You have to make sure the water is shallow enough so you can stand up holding your boat and also to keep some of the blades in your boat while you're turning. Now, the most important thing, now that you have your boat stopped and now you're gonna get your dolly or have a friend help you, is that you do not want to get between the shore and your boat. You don't want to be standing between the shore of your boat. For instance, if there's a ferry wake or just the boat decides to go towards the shore because of the wind, you don't want to be caught in between the boat and get crushed by your boat. You have nowhere to go and the water makes it hard for you to move around. Now, when you're approaching the shore, you're gonna to need to make a slow, controlled turn. Also, you wanna get pretty close to the shore, so you're gonna to have to lift up your daggerboard. Now, when you're lifting up your daggerboard, you also have to keep some daggerboard in the water, but also not hit the ground. So you have to compromise. So you have to judge how high to lift the board. Now, it's important, really important, not to lift the board too high, so it's going to hit your boom. Because if you inadvertently start to get the boom caught on the daggerboard and the wind takes it, there's a Good chance that you might capsize. How high you could lift your dagger board up? How high do you lift it when you are jiving 
or when you're on a reach. So I go about maybe this high. And it definitely, you wanna make sure the boom just clears it or clears it a lot. Now, another thing when you're going into land and you have an onshore breeze, you have to get out of your boat eventually. If you're still in the water, you really ideally do not wanna get into water that's at shoulder depth. It's hard to stand on the bottom. So you don't wanna really be swimming with your boat, especially if there's some wind. It's a lot more difficult to maneuver when you're not in your boat. Now, when you make your slow controlled turn, you're eventually gonna stop when the bow is pointed into the wind and your sails are gonna be luff and they're gonna be fluttering and luffing. So it's really important to continue to keep your bow into to the wind when you're getting your dolly keep your bound to the wind or when someone's helping you get your dolly keep the bound to the wind and you could hold it don't hold it from the back of the boat hold it from the bow handle or towards the front of the boat and just let it swing as it may be and it'll stay in control if you start holding it past i would say the mast it could start getting harder to control and if you hold it in a transom it's more likely just to pivot on the back and start to sail away from you and the bow will go away from the wind. And that's what you don't wanna do. So hold it in the front of the boat or the bow of the boat. So now if there's a helper on shore or someone's willing to help you, or even if it's a stranger, you can ask them politely to get your dolly and to roll it into the water. And then at that point, I would just take the dolly and float the boat on top of the dolly. Which means, which also brings me to, when you're taking your boat out of the water, it's always easier, especially if you use a Cytec or a dynamic dolly or those trolleys that they use in Europe to put the dolly into the water while the boat is still floating. I personally don't like to land my boat onto the beach and then put the boat from the beach to the dolly because one, it damages the bottom of the boat, it scratches it up, especially if there's rocks or shells. And then two, the boat feels a lot heavier when it's on land. To bring the dolly to the boat while the boat is still floating on the water, it's a lot less effort. But when the boat's on land, it feels like a big fat whale. Now comes the interesting point now, if you do have your boat into the wind which is usually pointing towards the water now because if it's an onshore breeze and now your dolly's underneath it now you have to push the boat backwards there's a couple of things that you have to know about especially when you're sailing a sunfish one at this point you want to take out all the slack of the main sheet however you want to still keep the main sheet loose so the sail can go wherever it wants because while you're rolling the boat up a lot of times the main sheet will go into the wheel of the dolly and then you got a mess and then that's a whole new thing. You got to lift up the dolly, undo the main sheet and it becomes a big pain in the neck. Also, another thing is when you're pushing the boat backwards onto the shore, it's actually, it feels a lot heavier when you're doing this, especially when you're getting out of the water and the sand is soft. If you can do it, you can do it pushing the boat backwards onto the shore with the bow still in the wind. However, if you can't do that, a lot of times it's easier to pull the boat on a dolly. If you have to pull the boat onto the beach, then drop your sails, it'll be easier to pull the boat onto land. Release your main sheet and take it off your boom. And so the sail can go any which way it wants and then it can go straight forward pointing over the bow. And that will let you pull the boat by the dolly. When you're landing on a lee shore, I always look to the water and make sure there's no big waves coming because if there are big waves, I just hang out several feet into the water, let them calm down. And then when you're not aware of big breakers and you have your boat, you can lose control of your boat. You can get caught underneath your boat or between the boat and the shore, which is really, really dangerous and you just don't want to do that. So anticipation when you're doing all these procedures is very important and it'll keep you safe and keep your boat in good condition. So if you're getting any value from this video, please smash that like button. I really appreciate it. I'm going to show you a couple of examples of people going into the canal with an onshore breeze. Now when you're going into an onshore breeze or a canal or a marina or a dock, it's really important to try to avoid jibing because there's a lot of things going on. You're in smaller areas and jibing sometimes you can get a little bit more speed coming out of a jibe avoid jibing at all costs if you can when you're approaching docking or onshore breezes now approaching a lee shore from a, with a sunfish is basically this one assess where the wind is coming from 
Where the wind is coming from, that's where you're gonna to want to end up with your bow facing. When you're going towards the shore, you're gonna anticipate you turning into the wind and then ending. It's almost like tacking, but you're stopping in the middle of the tack. You don't tack fully. So when the boat is slowly and easily turning, you should, when you're close to your destination where you wanna stop, slowly push your tiller towards the sail, which will turn your boat into the wind and then actually let your main sheet go, lift your dagger board maybe a few inches to several inches or even as much as halfway. But remember, do not lift your dagger board higher than the boom. So as you're pushing your tiller towards your sail, you're turning into the wind, you're letting your sail go so it starts to luff, your boat will pivot onto the dagger board. Your boat will naturally stall out. And when your boat is stopped, you could hop off on the windward side of the boat and then hold your bow, get all settled down. Now at this point, you probably want to take out your dagger board so the boom does not hit it. You could slide your dagger board out and lay it down on the deck. And then you could ask someone to get your dolly. Now, in a situation sometimes when you're alone, you might have to find your dolly, keep your boat in the water, run as fast as you can to get your dolly, throw it in there and make sure your boat doesn't sail away or hit a pylon or the dock. It can be done, just be careful. One thing you have to really make sure is don't let your main sheet get tangled up, make sure it's loose, don't have a little knot in it so it gets pulled into the block and don't let a knot get into the boom blocks where it'll start to sail away. Some hints when you're going onto an onshore breeze or anywhere where you're trying to land is take a look at where the boats are anchored. A lot of times boats are anchored in, in shallow water. If there's also people swimming, check out the depths of where they're standing. When you are landing your boat, be careful of any other people in the water and how your boat and your boom is gonna swing. You don't wanna hit any people that are swimming in the area, so just be really careful of that. Now, one mistake I see some people do when they're landing and they don't wanna hit the bottom of the floor of the water is that they, they're going downwind and they're going at a pretty good clip and they want to turn, but before they do that, they pull their dagger board out and they lay it on the, on the deck. That's actually the worst thing to do. You wanna pull out your dagger board only halfway and start your turn because if you don't have the dagger board in your dagger board slot, you can't pivot and you need to pivot. So when you're turning, the boat has to pivot on that dagger board. So don't take the dagger board out completely. Make sure you pivot. So let's see on the water what to do on approaching a lee shore. How do you get into the canal? The canal is a lee shore, meaning that you could just run downwind into that canal, which is not ideal because you could break a boat. You always want to end your journey into the wing. Luffing and the sails either off the boat and your boat stopped or your sails above, but your boat should be stopped. We're going to anticipate going in here. So you don't want to be sailing downwind when you hit the beach. So we have to do a turn and it's almost like a half of a tack. I'm going to practice it outside of the canal. So you either take one side, either the left side or the right side, depending on where your sail is. So now my sail is over the left side of the boat. So that means I'm going to go to the left side of the canal in this direction, because when I start to do my half tack, the boat will turn from left to right. So I need room to the right side. Port tack right now, which means my sail is over the right side. So when I turn into the wind, I need to go from right to left. So that means my sails over the right side of the boat. I would enter in from the right side of this canal. Let's see this 420 enter. Look how they're doing. Their sail is on the right side. They're on port tack. So they are on the right side of the canal. And they're going, they should be turning slowly into the wind before they get to the beach. That's the key, before they get to the beach. And now they're starting to turn, they probably, yeah, there you go, and they're luffing the sails, and they're gonna stop right into the wind. And then they get out of the boat. That's it, nice job, guys.
that's the video. I hope you got some good value from it. So please don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe to the channel, and ring that notification bell. I really appreciate it, and I'll see you on the water.